All right, very well. Let's start. Okay. Because I love the war. Good. All right, let's do it. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeal for Town Wareham. Tonight's agenda for uh, Wednesday, July 26, 2017. It is 6.35 p.m. And we are at the room 320 at the Multiservice Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass. I want to call the meeting to order. I'll make a roll call, my far right. We start with town engineer Charles Lowry, uh, member, board member uh, Wilma Engerman, town planner Ken Buckland, our clerk Jim Makabachi, my far uh, left, alternate member Jake Morrison, attorney uh, Jen Kendrick, and myself, Nazi El Kalasi, the chair. Uh, we have some preliminary business to do, get some minutes. Yeah, I did receive these minutes by email in advance, and I have reviewed them. They look accurate to me. I did, too. Okay, then I make a motion to approve as presented. I have a second? Second. Second by Wilma. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. Five. Five, zero, zero. Five zero. Zero. Yeah. Today, today, 26. All right, very well. Uh, Let's do the continue public hearing quick. Continue public hearing for petition 1717, JNJ Holding, LLC 2371 Cranberry Highway. I recuse myself, Jim. I'm will share be that. Act, as acting uh, chairman, I've received a, a handwritten note requesting an extension till the next meeting due to the fact that we do not have enough members here to. Um, afford one dissenting vote. Um, that said, I move, I suggest we accept this request, and I'd ask for a fellow member to make a motion to so move. Uh, I'd make a motion to accept the request. And do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Wilma. So it's, <clears throat> it's been moved to extend and it's seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, it's extended. It's till right. August 9th. August 9th, yep. August 17, 17. Thank you. All right, we go to the public hearing. Petition 27-17, Town of Wareham, 95 Charge Pond Road. Want to come forward, please just give us a minute to read the... The Zoning notice. Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on July 26, 2017, at 6.30 p.m. in room 320 of the Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass, 02571, for consideration of petition number 27-17, for a variance from the requirements of Article 6, Table 625 of the Wareham Zoning Bylaws to the Town of Wareham, care of Weston and Sampson, 100 Foxborough Boulevard, Suite 250, Foxborough, Mass, 02035, seeking to construct a new 80 by 128 foot salt storage building located at 95 Charge Pond Road, Wareham, Mass. That's on the, the Wayham Assessor's Map 113, Lot 1029 in the R130 Zoning District. Go okay, ahead. very good. For the records, Jake Morrison will be sitting for Carl Baptiste, so we have a board of five. So go ahead. Oh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Alberti. I'm a Vice President with Weston and Sampson uh, here to present the project to you this evening. Uh, Mr. Uh, Menard, the Director of Municipal uh, Services Maintenance, uh, is a planning on attending, uh, there's a little miscommunication on my part, so he might be showing here uh, just a little bit late, but um, I'd like to keep with your schedule and, and uh, present the project to you and uh, answer any questions that you have. Uh, I believe you received our uh, application, and um, I thought it would be important to give you a very brief um, highlight of the project, and then um, i try not to get into too much detail, and then I can answer any questions or get into more detail if you'd uh, like from that point. Okay. Can you see this from uh, where you're sitting? You want me to move it closer? Uh, this one doesn't have too much to say. This is just an overall 
aerial view showing the site. Uh, it's the municipal maintenance facility, if you're familiar with that location, just giving you a general overview of the project. And um, what we're proposing to do is construct a new salt storage structure. And in the um, application that we submitted, we provided a little bit of documentation on uh, the existing structure. As you can see from these photographs, this is what they currently have. On the left-hand side, you can see a front view of the existing structure. And if you look through the door, you can actually see daylight through the door. And if you look a little bit closer on the right-hand side of this board, you can see that uh, the building essentially is falling apart. And they have soil holding up the exterior. But really what's uh, driving the replacement of this, we consider this structure to really be a, a public safety function. It's storing the salt and sand that is used to maintain the roadway for the public and for um, the emergency services. And with the old structures that were constructed, the salt product was delivered differently, smaller trucks. Nowadays, they're delivered in large tractor trailers. So you can see that I have a note on the left-hand side that indicates that on this existing structure, uh, there's inadequate room to actually have the del delivery truck enter the structure and deliver the product. And as a result, all of that salt product gets uh, dumped outside, which is part of the reason why we're looking to increase the height of this structure. Uh, and there's several issues associated with that, and I'll show you those in, in a few moments. Generally speaking, um, the purpose is to replace the existing dilapidated undersized salt storage structure. It is too small to properly store enough salt product. Uh, as the industry has changed, there's a demand and a higher demand for the salt. And uh, during tough winters, if you don't have enough capacity, you can actually run out. And we've seen uh, that happen in some communities. So our goal is to provide the community with a structure that can uh, properly store that material. Location is the existing municipal maintenance facility. And the structure that's being proposed in the floor plan is shown in the center and is also included in your package is a 80 foot wide by 120 foot long uh, salt storage structure, uh, unoccupied, just used for storing the salt. It has a 10 foot eave, and you can see the photograph on the bottom right hand side uh, showing a sample structure recently constructed, 10 foot eave with a gambrel roof structure, and the peak is um, 45 feet high. Now that, that peak is critical to the safe operation of this structure and the safe delivery of the product so that vehicles can actually enter in the inside the structure and offload the product under cover as opposed to having it dumped outside. Um, the main issues that we see as outlined in the uh, letter in section five of, of your report is that at the existing structure, there's soil issues, which is what we're trying to address by going with the higher structure because that material is dumped outside. It ends up uh, contaminating that soil, makes that soil um, soft to drive on, makes it uh, inaccessible to try to get trucks in and out of it. So by constructing this new structure with the larger opening, uh, trucks will be able to pull inside. As an example of that pulling inside, and some of this was included in the application as well, you can see a photograph here of the proposed structure, and you can see the delivery of the product. And that height is driven by that highest point of the delivery vehicle so that I can pull inside without hitting the roof trusses, uh, have the product delivered, and then pull out without hitting the overhead door on the way out. Through that process, I did um, want to just bring some photographs to show you where the structure would be located. Uh, this is an overall area view with the existing municipal maintenance facility and the existing salt storage structure. And you can see all of that salt product just on that aerial photograph that uh, it's causing problems with the soils in and around that area that we're going to hope to uh, remedy. And you can see this cleared area here where the new structure will be located. We provided two views. You can see that uh, this is a view here looking at the general area of the construction of the salt storage structure surrounded by a forested area. And then you can see another view here looking back towards the structure. You can see uh, the existing municipal maintenance facility. So the main summary of the points, and then I'll close it and open up to any questions, is that in meeting the requirements for the variance, uh, we hope to address through the structure uh, the unsuitable soil conditions that exist in and around the existing structure associated with the products being stored outdoors. By constructing a lower one, we'll continue to create soil problems in that area. Uh, we feel that uh, this would be in the public's best interest, primarily because it is a public safety function and by storing the product inside, you'll have it uh, more accessible. 
to have the proper uh, volume. And in addition to that, it won't get clumped up when you do store it outside. It tends to get clumped up and damages the salt spreading equipment, which can then mean that your equipment that needs to treat the roads is um, not available to actually do that. So it's a really a important public safety function. Uh, we feel that it's uh, in line with um, the zoning bylaws. It's out of, out of sight. It's an um, accessory structure surrounded and forested around that particular area. And the structure itself is unique in that it is a salt storage structure that has those specialty delivery requirements in order to get that product inside. And because of the way that that product is stored at a 33 degree angle, which is what it stacks up at, it requires that height so you can get the proper volume so that you don't run out of uh, salt and sand product. So that's uh, my brief summary and I'm happy to answer any uh, questions that you might have. And I did bring a set of plans as well if you need me to refer to anything. So you're seeking uh, relief for the height? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. All right, I'm gonna just. And you need a variance for the height. Right. I'll, I'll just start with some board. We have a height limit. Right, it's 20 feet for accessory structures and R130, and he's proposing. It's considered accessory structures, so they want 45. All right, Wilma, what do you have to say? Oh, that was my, my question was the height, because it's only supposed to be. That's <coughs> what he's here for, yeah. yeah. And that's uh, all I have to say. I guess we, ne we need the building. <laughs> all right, uh, Jim. I don't really have any questions. Jake. I, I, I have one question. Go ahead. You're going to back in and dump. Eventually, you're going to work the pile out. It, it, at some point, the truck will actually be outside dumping in through the door to get the building completely full. Is that the idea? Uh, yes, I think that as you approach the end during um, the beginning of the winter season when you're trying to build that up to capacity, you might have a truck that's actually in the doorway yeah. raising up. Okay, that's my only question. Jay? Uh, no questions. Jan? I don't have any questions. Charlie, do you have any input on this? Any floor in the bottom? Uh, bituminous, the bituminous concrete paving. So hot mix asphalt, oh. black top. Just black top? Yes. You think it'll, it'll hold? Yes, um, we put in a, a, a 18 Eight. inch sub base with a six inch um, oh, okay. layer of hot mix asphalt and that's that's the preferred product because as it gets scraped up it's uh, easy to replace okay right around the edges to contain it yes it all slopes towards the inside and it comes up over the perimeter wall so there's nothing to leak out the sides it's all sloped to the middle yes from the entrance and the exit yes all right any aprons outside you no. get no aprons no how far you store the salt inside from the door? Uh, typically, we'll bring it to about uh, 20 feet of the door. We, we don't like to bring it right up to the door, just so you can get in and maneuver. Um, Ken, do you have anything? Can I ask yeah, a question? You, you uh, made the statement that the it was going to be asphalt inside? Yes. Okay. And this is salt, all salt that's going in there? Correct. How? Salt and sand mix, correct? Correct, yeah, there'll yeah, be a how, salt and sand. How many years before you have to take this asphalt and fix it after the salt eaten away at it? So I've, I've been uh, constructing these structures f for about 25 years, mm -hmm. and um, I think I know of one that went in there and did a quick mill and overlay on it, um, because primarily, um, because of its flexibility with the load of the salt it, and it doesn't crack and break apart you don't have any rebar that can be if impacted by the salt product um, so it's it's a very durable because it's the six inch heavy load pavement uh, structure type it'll it'll last uh, quite a bit of time and it's very very easy to uh, do a quick mill and overlay or you can just simply do an overlay right on top of it um, like you see sometimes on the roadways yeah well that's what i was thinking yeah salt eat way on the road sometimes and it yes this is a very um, easy to repair material as opposed to a concrete slab where you'd actually have to jackhammer it out It'd be expensive and time consuming so okay thank you you're welcome Ken go what do you think uh, 
The, uh, the zoning district that this, this is in is the R-130? Correct. That's what it is. Yeah, it's R-130. And, and in the use table, municipal use is not allowed? Is this a use variance as well? Um, based on my discussion uh, with the building official, my understanding is that it's, it's just associated with the accessory structure um, because it's already there. That, that the use, principal use is, is already there. Yeah, pre-existing, yeah. uh, non-conforming uh, situation with the use, so it's just for the height. It's definitely not a use because they're already doing it. Now, because there's an existing one, they're replacing it. Are you going bigger than the existing one? Yes. Oh, okay. and, the, and, the, and the exact location is changing too, so. All right. We need to ask for any comments from the public. I don't see anybody sitting here. Yeah, I see no one in the public saying yes make or no. Make a motion to approve. Oh, you have to close the hearing first. I make a motion to close the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor to close, say aye. 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 Make a motion Opposed to approve. Opposed, abstain. Okay, closed. Go ahead. Second it. Okay, so we have a motion to approve by Jim. We have a second by Wilma to approve the variance for the town of Wareham on 95 Charge Pond Road to grant them a relief on Article 6, Table 625. So do I have a second? She said do we have second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. There you go. Easy one. Five zero zero. You good? Thank you. Appreciate your Thank time. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm assuming what you want is some standard findings in this to uh, yeah to support the variance. All right. Well, I'm gonna write something. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's write a few things. Reason for granting. Not detrimental to the neighborhood. Okay. It's not detriment to the public. Good. Doesn't derogate from the zoning bylaw. Right. A variant. Uh, Doesn't what? Derogate. Derogate from the, from the intent of the purpose. Derogate. That's a good word. Yeah. From the intent or purpose of the bylaw. Uh, a literal, literal enforcement of the provision of the bylaw. involve a substantial hardship and uh, I think that's enough isn't it well you what you want is to say something about the, the uh, hardship condition the hardship itself <laughs> which the hard is part. <laughs> okay yeah uh, which is the shape of the lot and the yeah. topography well it's, so getting, it's getting the vehicles in and out of the, at the height uh, the or circumstances circumstances related <laughs> to the shape and topography that especially affects the subject property. <laughs> so is it ready to make it, make it so we didn't hand it to him? <laughs> make it sound like we didn't hand it to him. Okay. Happy? Happy. Cool. cool. Is that good enough? We, we can work on it a little bit. Add some additional wording. Yeah, you add. You, you add can make spices. it as flowery as you want. All right. So let me this write. Goes that. back in the folder. So it's five zero zero. All right. So. Uh, there no conditions. We need to sign it. Jesus, I wish every variance is easy like this. Okay. It, well, it's easily, it's, everybody knows the location. It's surrounded by trees. You know, there's really no reason to. We did have some uh, people that were noticed come in and uh, look at the file. So people have already been aware. Yeah, I know. I've been there many times. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't submit any written objections. But they came to look no. and the, whatever, was the, whatever their concern was was satisfied. They yeah. didn't show up. They just wanted to know what it was. Yeah. Salt bond. Gotta be better. That's, if that salt's getting all over, that's no good. I think it's a yeah, it's a big improvement because they're it's containing good. it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. And besides that, by by approving that, we'll probably get a big raise for being on the board. 
double our pay or something. Yeah. Double the zero. You can't joke zero. about things like that on TV. Somebody's going to hear you. And then they're going to want to know how much we get paid. the ZBA members get paid. <laughs> All right. Let's yeah. discuss uh, <laughs> associate member Ernie Ernest Alden. So uh, as, as, as we were discussing earlier, um, you know, we, we are aware that Ernie's um, not interested in remaining on the board, but, and, and with th three or more consecutive missed meetings, we have the authority to take a vote so that the selectmen are free to replace him as an alternate member, and therefore I move that we remove Ernie from the board and request the selectmen to supply us with a replacement. Do I have a second for that? Second by Jen. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. Just to clarify, it may be the appointing authority, not the Board of Selectmen that decides. Yeah, they decide. They it is the Board of Selectmen. Is it not the appointing authority? They are the appointing authority. Appointing authority? They appoint no, the appointing authority is for, um, for planning. And it, we just did appoint. It was the Board of Selectmen when I did it. Zoning. And these guys. It? Zoning is the Selectmen. Yeah. Okay. They appoint. The planning is the moderator, I guess. Well, we can change the, the language. Moderator, chairman of the planning board. Right. That's the appointing authority, which is more than just the uh, planning board. More than That's for the planning board, yeah. So zoning board is selected. So we'll let them deal with that. You, we just have to send them a letter. Yeah, send them a letter. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else, guys? Charlie, anything? No. Uh, the uh, town meeting warrant is going to be coming up. Is there anything that's pressing that you'd like well, what to have, submit? Well, whatever happened to that, those, the committee, you've been going to it? Well, we concluded about... Uh, yeah, and we have the... Uh, three months ago? Yeah, and we have the list of, of changes in the, uh, the zoning bylaws. Okay, Come. it's that list we talked about before. Did they change anything? Uh, there's, there's still some things in, in process. One of the uh, changes that affects the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals is the changes to Section 13, Article 13, which it is the pre-existing non-conforming. What about it? Uh, Dave Requina, Building Commissioner, and, and I are talking about re rewriting that, that section. Okay. We may not have it ready for this town meeting. I wanted to discuss, remember last time we wanted to discuss the the R130 issue? Like yeah. the setbacks for existing? Because of the small lots within the R130. Can we bring this back up somehow? So sure. we don't bother everybody coming here for to build a shed? Seeking a variance to build a shed? Or like anything, I mean, for, for you yeah, know, they need... Yeah, anything, but for our garage, but frequently... Yeah, this is what I, I was talking about with the building commissioner, and we were talking about options. Okay. One would be in the pre-existing non-conforming section, try to get something that, that uh, blankets it. The other is potentially changing the zoning of the, uh, the areas so that they reflect closer to the existing lot sizes and development. Okay. <coughs> well, is it, is it, is there still time to add a few things, no? Yeah, there is. You know, well, one thing I'd like to add, something that I'm going through right now, the buffer or the setback between commercial and industrial, I think it's only fair for future applicants not to be 20 feet, it should be 10 feet. You know, like the thing we're going through right now? Oh yeah, the landscape buffer, which is between commercial and industrial. Right. Between an industrial use and other use would be 20 feet. Right. Whereas otherwise it would just be 10. Correct. I, I, I suggest this, but I don't know what the, how the board feel about it. I agree. Wilma, do you agree? Simple, simple opinion. It's, uh, it's just... I mean, it, I don't, I don't find uh, any problem with getting a change. The rules, you know, as long as the bylaws are changed and we don't fight over the old ones, 
<laughs> you see, because I believe when you do, when you go in from c commercial, into when you apply them for commercial, just like the same case of J and J holding, when you go in from commercial to industrial, the industrial is apparently is more detriment than commercial, so you shouldn't have that big buffer. But when you go the other way, which is the zoning bylaw says industrial to commercial, it, 40 feet, which is makes sense because the industrial is more detriment than a commercial. It should be four feet, 40 feet away. But the other way around, I think 10 feet is. I agree on that too. You know what I'm saying? I think it might have been. It's not. In, it's not consistent with the setbacks in the use table or the setback right. table. So it's. There's an inconsistency, and it, it's, I don't know, is the right word ambiguous? I don't know. And, and I would think that in that uh, table, you'd also want to add another column for when you're adjacent to open space. It could be reduced. Right, because more. if you look at the table, they're telling you, like, from if you propose a commercial to a, to a single dwelling or two dwelling, is 20 feet, and commercial to industrial is 20. That don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, so I think commercial to industrial should be 10. If we could do something about it. What do you think, well, Jake? Does, this doesn't really I what, agree. It, what, what sense does it make? This, it's, uh, 20 it seems to be, it, I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, why would you have 20 from yeah, commercial 20. to industrial, yeah. but 10 from industrial? Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Industrial to industrial oh, is 10. Oh, oh, it's Page, 40, uh, it's double. 70. Yeah, okay. Right. It makes sense when you have a, a retail or a commercial, mm -hmm. and let's say an industrial company coming, it makes sense to be 40 feet away because the industrial is more noise, more industry, whatever. But the other way around, I don't think it makes sense. So when you're adjacent to the. the, uh, the that's, what, that's what the hearing that we postponed tonight, Good. that's what happened there. He, he, the zoning changes between. The proposed used car lot that we're going to vote on, and the existing um, moving and storage company. The, mo the, the moving and storage company is zoned industrial. I get it. Proposed. Use. And on the property line over to the uh, parcel that's going to be a used car lot is zoned commercial. Just the a suggestion. Industrial use is paved right up to the property line with no buffer. Well, that could have happened before the buffer was a requirement. I don't know. But, but the point being is the setbacks are only 10 feet between the two, but then you go to the landscape buffer and they're looking for 20 feet. You can't put 20 feet of landscaping in 10 feet. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't do it. So it's just, I think it's an error in the way it was written. That's the way I look at it. I, I think that it should be corrected. I know. Glorious. I mean, how many cases are these, but just a suggestion. How many are you going to have of those, maybe? Not too many. Not too many, but anyway. It's not going to, yeah, it's only. But I guess you learn from experience, and that was an experience what we're going through right now with that case. All right, uh, one more thing I want to look. Is there anything the in the proposed changes of the bylaws this that is the um, going to strike the language about no, drive throughs yeah. Do you want it to? Yes. He wants to you, get you want, about. you want to have drive throughs uh, I'm in favor of drive throughs yeah. I would like to strike all the language that prohibits drive throughs That would be my, I mean, if I could go through the bylaws and change something, that well, we could suggest it, and the the, the, the go through the process. It yeah. could yeah. go to the. On so the what I'm on saying is, if you guys are talking, and you're going to put a proposal forward, that's something that you really ought to look at. Yeah, you could do this, and if the it and goes on the warrant, if the people vote for it, so it passes. Some, somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody on a board. I mean, and that's that's the bad part of having these small unpaid boards like we are. Is that if somebody gets a, a, a hankering to do something, they can manipulate the whole town. Somebody at some point decided they didn't want any more McDonald's and Burger Kings in town. So our bylaws say no drive throughs. Right, it, that's it, what happens. It's a lousy bylaw. Why do we want to restrict banks to have drive through windows, CVS to have a drive, you know, Walgreens? The way our bylaw is written, nobody can have a drive through. 
And, and that's because in West Wareham, when the Wareham Crossing was being built, somebody that was on a board, and I don't know who it is, and if they're, if they're offended by my opinion, I'm sorry. Somebody got on a board and they made a rule and it passed. Nobody knew what they were making the rule. It was even before that, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I'm just, it happens. Yeah. You know, and it's a silly rule. Um, this the, is a drive through world. There is a, uh, an allowance for non-food drive-in establishment. So it's specifically it's, trying to get rid of the drive through restaurant. And in that's, the CG, in the CP. In the CP. What's wrong with a million dollar McDonald's or a two million dollar McDonald's in West Wareham paying taxes on a piece of land right now that's probably um, a blight to the neighborhood? What's wrong with that? Nothing, I guess. <laughs> Why do we have a bylaw that would prevent a blighted piece of land from becoming taxed at two million dollars? That's my point. I think it ought to be under a special permit. Well, I would, I would go yeah. for a special, I wouldn't mind a special permit, but I hate the fact that our bylaws prohibit it, and anybody looking at developing in our town, especially in an area that currently is hot for development, anybody, and when I say anybody, I mean, you know, these little guys with, you know, shallow pockets like Walgreens and CVS and McDonald's and Burger King, you know, they don't have any money and they, you know, they don't bring any, they don't bring any jobs to the town. It's pretty ridiculous to think about it. They're being excluded because of a silly bylaw. So, and do I'm, you think if they came to us though? No, if, they're not going to bother coming. No, they, Why won't they, even, gonna, they won't even, they won't even come. They read the bylaw and it says we don't want you. Because I think we probably might have approved Sonic if they I, had a bigger I, piece of land, right? I, I personally know of, it's of a hard approach. Of land I got you. So it's just not sold. worth it for them to come here. A lot of people will, won't even bother. I got you. Because they don't think that it's probably we Look at the favor. bureaucracy you got to go through to get a yes out of anybody. Yeah. And if there's a written law that says you can't have a drive through, why add that layer to, you know, the, the, when they're looking at our town as a, as a location? Yep. Uh, they don't want these us. company will spend 30, 40 grand to come before us and plans and stuff mm -hmm. and to come to say no, they're not going to bother. Time we, every time we extend, t tonight J&J Holdings had to extend, so they paid their engineer to show up, now they're paying them to go home and come back next week. And the lawyer a few yeah. times, mm -hmm. you, you know, know so, so things like that. I gotcha. So somebody looking at our bylaws is going to say, Oh, man, we're going to spend an extra 20 or 30 grand just to maybe get a yes. And a drive through window makes a lot of money for, for a right. business. So I think it, I, I, maybe at the time there was a reason that the town didn't want it. I, it's hard for me to believe that as a town we don't what want. Page is a use table. That in our town. Page 11. Oh. So I don't know. I, I, I would venture to say that there's four or five blighted locations on Cranberry Highway that would quickly be developed if that language was changed. I agree, so we could we could ask for it. So if the body votes for it, it goes. Because you have a restaurant drive-in use on the list, just that it's not allowed. No, 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 no. I want to change it to a why, 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 why. Right. Yes, 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 yes. It's a special problem. He wants to... <laughs> Change it to SPZ. Uh, yeah, with, uh, I like Charlie's suggestion. Make it spe make it a special permit. So that well, it has to be a special permit. You got to put conditions on it. So we can make it safe and all that. That's fine. I'm good right. with that. But um, these places, they put young and old people to work that aren't going to work elsewhere. They they pay them well. They take care of their property. They, you know, I love businesses that you know that employ people and don't put kids in our schools. I want to mention something. You know On I mean? motor vehicle sales, I believe about 10 years ago, Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong, if you remember, it was, it was taken, it was taken out of Main Street, repair and auto sales. And it struck me last time I was looking at the use and it's allowed use. I, rec I recall very well that the order repair and sales back when, what was that guy, the town planner, Chuck? Chuck? Chuck Krakus. Mm -hmm. Chuck Krakus. And I remember he brought it in very well. And I remember very, very good. And they took it out of the bylaw that it becomes a no in Wareham Village. 
and I'm looking at it right now, according to the, this bylaw. It's back as a yes. It's a yes without a special permit. So you could go sell cars on Main Street without a special permit. You should go pick up a license. Yeah. You want to change that? I, I do, because right. remember in R130, we said there's a no, because I don't believe we should have motor vehicle service. The, some, somebody, is, somebody typed this bylaw wrong. It was it's definitely a no, because I know I looked it up five years ago, it was a no, and I know it passed the town meeting. There's no repair or sales on Main Street in Wareham Village. So well, that's one of the things we're doing is correcting some of the... Uh, it was voted back when Chuck was here for a no. And now it's yes without a special permit. That's crazy. For sales and service. I mean, first of all, this, 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 this edition 2016, it contradicts what the town meeting I forget what year it was, 2007 or 8, voted. Yeah, I, I know for a fact we voted no for it. Yeah, we, we found several errors like that in the... Uh, yeah. So either we got to check it or we got to change it. You know? If, it's, if we if check it's, it, if it's, it's actual, an error, if then it's it's actually done error, we'll, we'll, we'll it should be correct. And also, again, it's an onset village. It shouldn't be an onset village as a yes. You know, you can't have, what, what, who wants a garage or a sales announcer village or Wareham village? Nobody. But who wants a garage or auto sales? That's <coughs> great. And that's without a special outside? permit. This was for last you year. understand? Oh, yeah. Never, I mean, never mind is allowed you special permit. I mean, in, in commercial areas, like I'm doing of J&J, &J, it's a special permit. On Main Street or in Onset Village, you could just go get it without a permit. Without OV1 or two? What? OV1. OV1 and WV1. It's an allowed use, repair and sales. Just in the, in the one district, in the, the down, the, what, what we call the village center. Right. And it doesn't make sense. No. So somebody could close an ice cream shop and open a garage, and you can, can't even put any conditions on nothing. And you think that this was already changed? It is, I don't know about Ansa Village, but I know for a fact Wareham Village was changed maybe 2007 or 2008. For a fact, I know. I will check that one. Now, Ansa Village, Sorry. last time we requested, when we did the R130, which is fixed here, remember on the last town meeting, I, re I requested the R130 shouldn't be like this because the 130 used to be allowed also with a simple permit from selectmen without special permit which is the recharge area zone two right like the water issue so it's fixed now we're talking about selling cars or repairing cars. selling and repair you see it Sell, yes yes see is that considered across from the playground onset village you know oh. the playground going down yeah, there? all where because there's two shops there right now that yeah. repair and i see cars for sale right ever on occasion yeah they went and get it without a special permit they just went to the select so they just went in and the selectmen well, can't say no. It's okay, so they did it. And I think it's crazy. And they've been there for a while, too, now. I'm sorry to say. And, well, you got um, a gas station on Main Street that has a repair shop in it. Changed. Well, right, existing is different. I understand. It's sharp enough. Yeah. And that's my opinion. I don't think it should be on May, <coughs> in, in the village. I mean, maybe some people agree with that. I, just, I don't I think it's a good idea. 50, 60 years ago, the guy, you know, Gomer, was down on one end of the village, and had one police car and one deputy with one bullet but you know we don't it's right. a little different world now so so he wasn't you, allowed to carry the bullet and the yeah, gun at the same time typo and if it's not can we change it can we request oh, well we can't change it can we put it on a on a on a warrant to change it like we did the r130 yeah that, i think so we we can we can do that as part of the uh, review of the existing what it was passed previously. Right, did you see which one I'm talking about? Yeah, it did. Those two, yes. These two. This All right, one, one and two. Yeah, I put down 2008, 2007. So remember this one we changed, so it became a no. Yeah. Oh, you have the old one. Yeah, this, this is the old, old. This is the old bylaw. Right. This is so my markup. So it'd be good to check on it. I know for Wilhelm Village, it's definitely a no. 
Okay. So, but, but I don't know about answer, but it'll be a good idea to change them both. All right? All right. Very well. Anything else, guys? What's <coughs> You know anything more about the uh, 40B proposal? Or Haven't heard from them yeah. since the uh, since they uh, got the rejection letter from uh, the state house, right? not from the state house, but from the selectmen. Or yeah, well, right, but a rejection le letter from the from the selectmen isn't effectively a rejection. No, it's not. Yeah. I just haven't heard from them since that letter it's, went out. It's really just a, hey, people up at the state level, we don't want this yeah, signal, what, right? The, the, yeah. What they did was they were in the application for a project eligibility letter from the, from the state, from mm -hmm. the DHCD mm -hmm. uh, agency. Yeah. And they had come to the, uh, to the Board of Selectmen and to the town to uh, present their plan, got a letter that was it was not in a, it was in opposition to the project for a number of reasons mm -hmm. and that went back up to the state <clears throat> and we haven't heard about a uh, project eligibility letter being issued or postponed right as a result of that concerns identified result of that. yeah one more thing can also uh, to go back to the same prior subject about motor vehicle service and sale in the industrial park service is allowed sales is not allowed which is doesn't make sense it should be allowed in the industrial park you know what i'm saying like for instance factory five manufacture cars but they can't sell it that's crazy <laughs> yeah what's wrong with going to the industrial park i mean if you money if you if you fix them and manufacture them you should be able to sell them in the industrial park So, so you think that should be a yes? It should be. I think it should be yes. That's my opinion. What's I mean, objectionable about selling cars, exactly in, in, a, in the industrial. industrial park, exactly. The whole idea, what I'm trying to say, nobody's going to make a car in the industrial land. But what I'm saying, if you fix them and repair them, it, it makes sense to have a license to sell them. Absolutely. You know. And so what if some big dealership wanted to put a dealership in the middle of the industrial park. Okay, dry they clean. They could drag people in there through marketing. Yeah, you can. Tell capitalism. Why not? They should, they should be able to. A big proponent of that. All right, so, the, so Did you tell? these things strike me. So if we could check on them, all right? Yeah, let's see. Maybe Thank put those in for changes. All right, well, just check, make sure it's yeah, what I'm we're, talking about. Yeah, we're checking on the uh, past. All right, very good. It looks like a number of, of previous articles from town meetings didn't get included in this draft of the, uh, of the zoning bylaw. All right. All right, anything else, I have, guys? I have one here. It's been a pet peeve of mine for a while. And it's under accessory uses or accessory buildings, 625. What page, Charlie? Uh, page 50. 50. Section 625. Yeah. yeah. That's where we just put the residential uses. The height of an accessory building can be no more than 20 feet. If the lot is greater than 10,000 square feet. But if the lot's 10,000 and under, the height can be 25. Hmm. <laughs> I have a two car garage in my house. And the house that I have is two stories with an attic above. It has a relatively steep pitch. When I built the garage, I wanted it to look a little bit like the house, so it sort of matched it in terms of the, the pitch in the garage. Right. If Makes I had sense. to restrict that to 20 feet, it would look like I had a shed in the front yard. Yeah. Right. So, so be, yeah. you throw it back up there to 25 or 30 or whatever it is. Right, because yeah, any, any decent yeah. garage, you need 10 feet and 10 feet height inside, at least 10 feet, and you have a 12, let's say your, your house is a 12, 12 pitch or the 12, 10, you make it 12 ten, and you garage 24 feet. You t that's 30, that's. I know they were trying to control illegal apartments and garages and that sort of thing when it came about. But you got ways of taking care of that. But to uh, penalize somebody so that they can't have a decent looking building mm -hmm. that goes along with the architecture of the rest of the property, 
I know, look, I... saying it could be higher on a 10,000 square foot lot. I know, I was going to build a barn. I never thought yeah. about it. I was going to do a barn in my house. I'm not, I can't do it. 20 no. feet high. Oh. I was going to do a barn like 30 by 50. It's going to look stupid, 20 feet. I, I want it 12 feet high. I'm going to have a big... My house is a 12, 12 pitch. It's never going to look good. Yeah. Hmm. So, Santa, can you check on that too? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, I, I should point out that, that uh, Charlie had uh, provided a new list of issues for the zoning study committee. I, I was out that that night. Oh. Yeah. Maybe the building commissioner won't come with a tape measure. He won't measure it for you. <laughs> <laughs> um. oh. hmm. Yeah, that, right. that seems nonsensical. That, was def that definitely must have been a mistake, right? I can remember when they did it, they, they were concerned about illegal in-law apartments and, and increasing livable space above garages and things like that. Because so they felt if they cut it down, nobody would live there. That goes back to what I'm saying earlier. I, I think that's, you know, the tail wagging the dog. I yeah. think that's the, the, that's the wrong way to go about. You know, I agree with those 10-foot buffers, too. It, it makes more sense to have a quality landscaping area, something that can be well-maintained rather than simply say you've got to have 25 or 30 The bigger feet, isn't know, always better. You've got to put berms of soil and everything. Whoever thought that you're going to uh, put a barrier up to where you can't see cars in a parking lot by the use of landscaping <laughs> doesn't understand landscaping. Right. You can never make it that thick, nor do you want to. Right. So it's the quality of what goes into it, not, right. yeah. not the depth of it necessarily. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, probably those cases are probably the first case that J&J &J holding. I don't think there's other, but it would be good to yeah, fix it. Yeah, we don't it. have that much industrial It makes sense zoning. to fix it, you yeah. know? All right, very good. Anything else, guys, or you want to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Thank you, Bob. <laughs>